collaborate or die. This is the motto of 21st century business. We really have acknowledged that without collaboration, any organization will not reach their full potential. However, particularly at the executive level, we are not structured to operate as true teams. We are structured to operate as independent business units, independence, independent groups. So to help the executives really develop this reflex to cooperate on the issues on which this cooperation or collaboration is required, we have solidified the process that has worked for us over the years, but now is really implemented with our clients in a much more disciplined and rigorous way. We really want to make sure that we help the leaders to develop behaviors and attitudes, enabling them to create a culture in which business focus maintains, priori maintains being priority number one, but the way we go about achieving business, rego uh, business results is much more inclusive, much more open to views and perspectives of others, and much more uh, respectful of business issues and priorities of other units, of other parts of the organization. And for us, throughout the process, there are a few things that are absolutely critical. Number one, you need to take a stock of where you're at right now and how we go about it. We go about it by facilitating a discussion for the team, reaffirming the strategic direction of the organization, reaffirming the ambition, the business goals, priorities and challenges. And against this backdrop, facilitating a discussion about what does team actually mean and how do we need to conduct ourselves in order to create a true spirit of collaboration rather than going go-karting together. Um, secondly, we truly believe that you cannot have a real collaboration and real team spirit if the foundation of this collaboration is not anchored in trust. And in many cases, this trust is not given. So quite often, we need to take a step and really f devote attention and time to create an environment in which people are comfortable taking risk with each other. And they know that taking risk with each other will have organizational uh, benefits. So first, we take a stock of where we are. Secondly, we measure how do we want to be seen, how do we need to conduct ourselves to be successful. Thirdly, we say, how do we compare to those desired benchmarks that we create? And then throughout, often throughout the year, we have activities that are taking place on two levels. Number one, we work with individual executives to help them address their issues, their particular challenges, their areas of concern. And parallel to that, we work with the entire team helping the executive to discuss and address the issues that they need to discuss. The assessment of what is against what should be helps us to really identify the team strengths upon which they need to build and capitalize. And the areas of concern, potential derailers or obstacles that will prevent them to be operating on the optimal level. Uh, at the end of the initiative, we reassess. And there is a reason why we are so gung-ho on measurement. It is important for us to measure the progress, what is, what should be, and against, again at the end, but also throughout to pause and, and reflect what is, on what is working well and what could be working uh, better. What are some of the things that we have addressed well and we are satisfied? What are some of the things that we need to uh, address because they are new, newly uh, surfacing? Um, it ensures our focus is right and it ensures that it translates in the real business uh, results. Um, in addition, measurement helps us to drive a true ownership and accountability, both for the entire team and for the individuals, individual members of the team. 
And it is fantastic to see that when the executive takes ownership for their own development process, when the executive as a team takes ownership for their process to be aligned, to act as a cohesive unit, to make sure that, that they have each other's back, that they uh, support each other through thick and thin, um, the entire culture in the organization shifts. It shifts to the better. It means that collaboration is not just a word. The need to cooperate is not just in print or in your competence definition, but it really is something that becomes part of the makeup of the DNA of the organization. So people, for people it becomes much easier to be ambitious for the organization's success first and for themselves second. It is much easier for them to be altruistic and not be possessive about the success of their the unit, but to really be supportive and help other units out with the resources or with time or with systems. Uh, and, uh, and we can see immediately how this changes the attitude of all the employees in the organization. So seeing the executive aligned, seeing the ripple effect of their actions on the rest of the business is a really a great source of satisfaction and joy for all of us here at uh, March 15. And to me, it, uh, it really brings a smile on my face to see the executive as a team, as an individual to take ownership and drive, uh, and drive results. And even more so, what I find fascinating and what I find tremendously satisfying is the fact that through this, through this initiative, the executives acknowledge that teamwork or leadership are not soft issues. This is not soft skills exercise. Leadership is hard. It's connected to real business results. Collaboration is critical for the organization to be ready today and create sustainable processes to be successful tomorrow.